This video shows how to install a Calyx E7 II shelf. The E7 II shelf can be installed on any standard 19 inch or 23 inch equipment rack. The E7 II shelf is only one rack unit tall, so select a mounting location with one RU of available space. Let's go ahead and get started. Begin by unpacking the E7 shipping box and familiarizing yourself with its contents. The main components include the E7 II chassis, the fan module and fan filter, and an installation kit containing power and ground cables, mounting brackets, and installation hardware. First, select the appropriate mounting ears from the kit for your rack. We have a 19 inch rack in this example, so we will use the 19 inch rack ears. Attach the pair of mounting ears to the E7 chassis using supplied screws, four per side, left and right. For projection mounting, you can position the ears further back on the side of the chassis. Several different depth options are available. For Etsy environments, an optional Etsy mounting bracket kit is available from Calyx. If you are using the Etsy bracket kit, position the narrow end of the bracket toward the front of the shelf as shown. Attach the pair of mounting ears to the E7 chassis using supplied screws, four per side, left and right. To help place the E7 shelf in a level position on the rack, you can temporarily install hanger screws on each side of the rack just below the mounting location. Then, when you're ready to mount the E7 shelf on the rack, you can rest the chassis ears on the hanger screws while you adjust and install the mounting screws. Mount the E7 chassis to the rack using four supplied mounting screws from the kit, two per side. If the Calyx supplied screws don't fit your rack type, then use your own supplied screws as shown here. Next, we ground the shelf. It's advisable to wear an ESD wrist strap during installation activities to protect the equipment from static discharge. At the rear of the E7 shelf, remove the clear plastic cover over the power terminals by loosening the thumb screw. Keep the cover nearby to reattach later. Get the supplied ground cable from the kit. Connect the cable's two-hole lug to the dual post frame ground terminal on the chassis. Install the two supplied KEPS nuts onto the ground posts and hand tighten. Then use a nut driver to securely fasten the lug in place. Route the other end of the ground cable to the main ground system and terminate per PANI guidelines or local practice. If you are unable to connect to the main ground system and must use a rack frame ground connection instead, then file off all the paint around the bond point on the rack so that there will be a clean metal to metal contact between the lug and rack frame with no paint present. Coat the surfaces with antioxidant grease and securely attach the ground lug to the frame with a thread forming screw. Next, we install power. Get the supplied power cable from the kit. At the rear of the E7 shelf, remove the four screws from the power terminals. First, connect the A-side black battery return wire to the A-side return terminal. Then connect the A-side red battery wire to the A-side DC battery terminal. If supplying redundant power, connect the B-side black battery return wire to the B-side return terminal. Then connect the B-side red battery wire to the B-side DC battery terminal. When finished, reattach the plastic safety cover and secure it in place by tightening the thumb screw. Route and connect the E7 power cables to a negative 48 volt DC power source. If the source has a fuse panel, use the supplied 7.5 amp fuses to protect the power circuit. To connect the E7 to an external alarm system or external timing source, you must wire wrap these interfaces at the back of the E7 shelf. The alarm interface pins are located below the ground terminal, and the timing interface pins are located to the right of the power inputs. Refer to the E7 II installation guide for detailed instructions to connect to these interfaces. To establish a permanent out-of-band Ethernet management connection to the E7 shelf, Calyx recommends using the rear Ethernet management port for this purpose. Connect a CAT5 Ethernet cable to the rear management port and connect the other end to a switch on your local network. Next, we'll install the fan module. The supplied fan filter is required for indoor locations only. For outdoor cabinet installations, do not use the filter. To install the filter for indoor installations, orient the rubber frame side of the filter with the right side edge of the fan module, and then insert the filter into the fan module housing. 
press down on the top edge to ensure that the filter is fully seated. Next, insert the fan module into the E7 chassis and press it all the way into the slot until the latch clicks. The E7 chassis ships with a blank card installed in one of the two slots. When equipping the E7 with only one line card, use the blank card to occupy the other slot to ensure proper airflow through the chassis. If you want to use the slot where the blank is installed for the one line card, remove and reinstall the blank into the other slot. Or, when using two E7 line cards, remove the blank card and set it aside as it will not be used. Next, we install the E7 line cards into the chassis. Unpack the E7 line card and remove it from its ESD protective bag. And then remove the protective cover from the backplane interface. Flip the seating lever to the open position and insert the card into the slot. Press the card all the way into the slot and then press the seating lever into the closed position to fully seat the card. Repeat the process to install a second line card. Calyx offers a shelf mounted fiber guide option for the E7 II, not included with the basic kit. This sequence shows how to install the optional fiber guide. The fiber guide bracket sits on top of the left side mounting ear, so to install it you must first temporarily remove the two mounting screws. Set the bracket against the left mounting ear and then reinstall the two screws. Next, get the fiber guide and attach it to the bracket using the two captive thumb screws. Hand tighten them only. When ready to route and dress fiber, remove the rubber band. We're now ready to install optics modules into the line card port sockets. For transport or uplink connections, typically you will use 10 gig XFP or SFP Plus modules in the E7 10 gig ports. Insert 10 gig XFP modules into the XFP port sockets and or insert 10 gig or 2.5 gig SFP Plus modules into the SFP Plus port sockets. For Ethernet services connections, typically you will use 1 gig SFP or CSFP modules in the giggy SFP ports. For example, to provide 1 gig active Ethernet service drops to Calix ONTs, insert 1 gig bidirectional SFP modules into the SFP port sockets. For GPON services connections, insert GPON OIM modules into the GPON OLT ports. Now we're ready to connect fiber. Route all fiber jumpers to the E7 shelf from the left side. If you are using the optional fiber guide, route the fibers through the guide and then reattach the rubber band to keep neat containment. Remove the protective caps from the connectors and then insert the fiber connectors into the optics module. Repeat this process for each equipped E7 port to commission. Use Velcro straps to neatly groom and dress out all fibers to the left side of the shelf. Finally, route and connect fibers to the far end termination point. If you are providing copper based access services such as VDSL, the interface cables connect to the rear of the E7 shelf. First, remove and discard the protective plastic covers from the four RJ21 connectors. Next, route the copper interface cables to the right rear corner of the E7 shelf. Calix strongly recommends using shielded CAT5 cables for best signal performance. For services on slot 1, connect the two cables to the P1 and P2 RJ21 ports. For services on slot 2, connect the two cables to the P3 and P4 RJ21 ports. Tighten the screws to secure the interface connections, but be careful to not over tighten them. Do not apply more than 4 inch pounds of torque when tightening the screws. Route the cables out to the right side and connect them to the far end termination point, dressing with tie wraps every 8 inches or so. At this point, the E72 installation process is complete. You just need to power up the shelf and perform initial turn up and commissioning. Apply power to the E7 shelf. After it completes its boot up cycle, you can connect your laptop to the front management port with an Ethernet cable. Log in to the E7 EWI to run the turnip wizard, and off you go. Refer to the E7 user documentation for complete instructions.